Have you ever needed an easy way to display a single axe or hatchet? Stick around on today's video to find a cheap, easy way to do it. So, here's the answer to the conundrum of displaying a single axe. So, this is the hatchet that I restored for my son. Uh, he wanted to be able to hang it in his room. So, what I did is I went and I picked up this, um, I don't know, it's probably three-eighths uh, slab of, I guess red oak, it looks more like red oak than anything else, uh, from Home Depot. No, I'm sorry, I got this at Lowe's. This cost me three bucks. I picked up these hooks. He liked these. There's kind of that bronzy hammered look about them. Uh, each one of these was two bucks. So I'm in this, um, I think all total with tax, $8, maybe eight bucks. So it's too long. So what I, I bought it much longer than my little hatchet. So what I'm actually going to do is whenever you look, if you, any of you have ever tried to display a hatchet, the problem with it is, is the front is so much heavier than the remainder. So whenever you hang it like this, what's invariably going to happen? It's going to tip. It's going to fall out. So you have to have a hook on the back end to be able to hold it. So easiest way to do that is take the back hook and invert it. Okay. Easiest way to do it in the world. So now what you do is you've got your holder on the top, on the front and your hook on the back. Look at that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, man. Um, can't believe I just said that. <laughs> but I'll leave it in there just so people can make fun of me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure everything out. Um, I will measure it out and bring you back and show you so you don't have to sit here and watch me measure things. So I'm going to measure everything out and come back once I've got everything laid out and I'll explain to you why I've got it laid out the way I've got it laid out. Okay, so welcome back. So I've got everything laid out. You see my Sharpie marks there. So what I actually did was what I wanted to measure this out as, and I just, I, used, I did everything with my uh, combination square here. So what I did was first thing I did is I wanted to have a little bit of the end of my hatchet hang over or a uh, little bit of the wood showing so as you can see right there what I've got is I've got it back to where it's going to hang and a little bit is going to be showing right there and I wanted the top to be a little bit less than the reveal of the wood as well so I came in I laid those out I found out what that distance was up here with my square got it nice and square with my square marking my holes came down this one was a little bit more tricky what I ended up doing was I had it laid out and what I wanted to do was I wanted to have the hatchet lay level in there so I just kind of had to work this second one back and forth I say back and forth like this until it got to where the top was level but I also had the same amount of reveal down with my square okay so as you can see it ended up being a little past um, where my actual bend is there it's right about there but whenever I lay these out you'll see there hard to do with the camera in hand and there so they're square they both got the same amount of reveal on the top and on the bottom. So what I'm going to do next is I will drill these out and install them. Actually, no, I take it back. I'm going to drill them out and then I'll finish everything and then I'll install them later.
here's the situation. As you can see, I've got some really, really deep saw kerf marks here. There we go, finally showing. I cannot sand that down enough and I don't have a planer. As you can see, I'm trying to restore my grandfather's old planer. If this were currently working, I'd be in business, but it's not. So I'm left with that. So what I'm gonna do, just flip it over. So as you can see, now it went from being a right hang, I guess a right handed hanging hatchet to a left handed hanging hatchet. Eh, that still may not work very well though. Nah, eh, that'll still work. Yep, that'll work. Sorry about the camera there. I just, yep, that'll work. So, there you go. It's just going to have a little bit of an overhang there that I'm not super crazy about. So I guess what I'll probably do is have a little bit of a, an overhang here. I'll cut it accordingly that way. I've got an even overhang at the end of the handle and the top of the head. So um, I will sand this down. You won't see me sand it. Uh, but I'll sand this down, prep it, you'll see me cutting it, and then we'll get the get the assembly finished up real quick. Actually, no wait. I will do my sanding, and then get, the next time you see me, you will be with my son here, and he will be partaking in the finished product here. I um, like to do some of this prep work with him, because he's only seven, he just turned seven, so a lot of the layout work and stuff bit tedious for him. So I will remark everything, sand this down, and then next time you see me it will be during the daytime and we will put this sucker together and you'll see the finished product. Welcome back. So here we are. I went ahead and, and chopped this off. The little it's the same distance hangover on the end of my axe, my hatchet, as it is the head. There you go. So, it's not the way I wanted it to be. I wanted the, the wood to be longer, but I'm actually okay with this because what's gonna end up happening is you're just gonna see more of the hatchet itself. So, I'm fine with that. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put you on fast forward so that you don't have to watch me do it, but I'm just going to run my screws in and I'm gonna have a since this is such such thin wood, I'm gonna have a sacrificial piece behind it, a little two by four, or a scrap two by four, and I'll run my screws in. Um, actually, I wanna clarify, I'm not gonna have my two by fours behind my holes. I'm gonna have my two by fours on the ends, and I'll run my screws through, that way I'm not screwing into anything. So, I'm going to stand it up, run my screws in, you'll see me do that real quick. And then what I'm going to do next is you'll you'll just see me do it in fast forward. These screws that came with this, they're just the right size and they've already got the heads to match. Um, I ran out of the appropriate, uh, not the appropriate, I ran out of paint, this uh, bronzy look with the right size. Uh, I've got the right size screw, but I don't have the right paint. So I don't want just to look like that on the front side. So I'm going to use those screws. I'm going to use these screws, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my Dremel and once I get the screws run in, I'm just going to cut them off flush on the back and then I'll put a little hanging hardware on it. We can hang it that way. Okay, so next couple of minutes, uh, minutes, being generous, next few seconds, run it in with a drill and then cut it off on the back. Actually, no, scratch that. I've got this set up, forget it. I'm going to rub it down with my uh, BLSO. Just thought I'd say that for fun. So some boiled linseed. Um, I like the look of it and it protects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub it down with some boiled linseed. Um, 
what I'm actually going to do is this again. It's going to take me another day to do this, but what I'm going to, or I say a day, another few days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it down once a day for a week, and then let everything dry, and then I will be back. And the next time you see me, it'll be a week later, and we will have a protected piece of oak there. All right, welcome back, everybody. I have no idea what I was thinking whenever I said it would take me five days. This is day number two, okay? Let's focus, there we go. So that is four coats of boiled linseed oil. One in the morning, one in the evening for two days. I have no idea. I was trying to be like Wrangler Star where whenever he talks about treating handles, he says, what's this saying? Uh, once, a, once a day for a week, once a week for a month, and once a month for a year. So, um, that is what I was thinking about, but I, I'm in Texas, I'm in Central Texas, and it's the summer, and it just absolutely soaked it up. So we are calling that treated. So four coats of boiled linseed, it's looking good. So I'm just gonna assemble real quick, and we'll get it hung on the wall. Okay, so it turns out screws are a lot harder than I gave them credit for. Martyred that a little bit. So, I tried the Dremel, I tried the hacksaw, and <laughs> I'm sure if I worked long enough at it, the Dremel would have gotten through, but this is an old hacksaw blade. I had no idea. I've never actually tried to cut a screw before. Screws are tough. So, what I'm gonna try to do now is I've scored them. You can kind of see. I've scored them so I know how long they need to be. And I'm going to try the reciprocating saw now. So let's see what we get there. Yikes, look at that. It got so hot I melted my soft jaws. And I'm still just barely halfway through. My goodness gracious. Who knew screw was that tough? Put that hatchet up there, what do you say? Nope, that didn't work at all, did it? Look at that. What was I thinking? My goodness gracious. Gonna have to do two of the ones on the back. My goodness. So there you have it. You need an easy way to display a single axe or a single hatchet. There's a quick easy way. 
So just remember, one up, one down, and don't ever try to cut screws. And number three, you got to have two anchor points. See? One, two anchor points, because otherwise you run into the same problem that just wants to spin on you. So, quick and easy hatchet display. Let me know what you think in the comments.